Ah, there he is. The Terry Bug. People won't know what that means, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get to that. Greeny, how are you? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? Oh, mate, it's so... I'm better now I can see you. It's It, it really has been a joy for me over the last two weeks, catching up with my old teammates. You know, we've been too long too long away from each other. I saw Bruce it's today. Apart, stuck in lockdown. Yeah, it's just awful, isn't it, man? How you been handling it? Yeah. Um, look, it's been different. Obviously, uh, we've both got kids and, um, you know, homeschooling and um, dealing with that pressures. And, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. But, um, you know, I've got my own business um, and dealing with homeschooling and different things. But, uh, mm. yes, as everyone would be in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, mm. um, we, it's a pandemic that we're all dealing with and it's it's something different, but um, we get, we're we getting through. I can't complain. Um, no one listens anyway, but um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, I'm okay. I can't complain. I, it's even through the grand final. That's the main that, thing. That's exactly <laughs> right, mate. And that's the amazing thing about I knew you'd be all right. Nothing really gets to you, Greeny. You're always a happy man. Always have been from day dot you got to Melbourne. Uh, happy fella. Um, uh, what is that about you? Because nothing seems to ever get you down. You get dropped, not, not that that ever happened, or you get injured or whatever it was in your career. You always seem to be, I uh, should be right, mate. I don't know about Rob. I reckon it's Tasmanian. Yeah. Um, it's us being for, coming from a, a small island and um, and dealing with, you know, we, we've we got simple pleasures being Tassie guys. <laughs> There's nothing, we, we never grew up with, you know, um, city folk don't really know what we had to deal with yeah, in Melbourne, but yeah. uh, simple pleasures in, in Tassie, everything doesn't phase us. Um, you know, we we had to get on with 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 anything in being people in Tassie. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah, nothing phased me too much. And um, yeah, I, I enjoy life. Yeah. I uh, You just get on with it. Yeah. Obviously, uh, people will know we, I've gone through a couple of, um, different uh, circumstances over the last few years. And mm. um, the thing is, the sun comes up tomorrow and you've yeah. got to get on with life and you've got to deal with um, the next day um, because otherwise, yeah. um, you know, what, what what happens in life, it keeps moving forward. And if you stop, mm. um, life doesn't stop. So you've got to keep moving with it. And if you don't, um, it's going to be hard on you. So you might as well keep growing with it and living with it. Mate, it's, it's really inspiring. And we'll get to exactly why uh, you were just talking about. I feel like I need to explain, though. Greeny said, us being Tasmanians, it's not simpleton pleasures. <laughs> you know, we're not talking family as an inter, inter-family. No. Uh, no, we're talking simple pleasures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but let, let's let's go back first before we get to where we are now because you've got so much going on and, and the D's and where they're at, and I'm loving that T-shirt. We'll talk about that too. Um, cricket, soccer, footy. You're like the typical young Australian kid, you know. There's there's two or three choices there that we all sort of make, but you were so good at all of them. You kind of had to make a decision between which one it was going to be. Yeah, growing up in um, Georgetown, Tasmania, I live 50k north of Launceston, so I went to Lonnie Grammar down in Tassie. Um, yeah, I look. I'm like any kid in Australia that played um, soccer in the winter, cricket in the summer. Um, and then as I got older, I basically come across this game called Aussie Rules when yeah. I was 15, 16 and, oh, wow. and started playing that. So, mate, I'm like any kid that loves any ball sport, um, tennis ball, basketball, anything that I can get my hands on, I love. Mm. Um, and and being in Tassie, you, you, if you're any good at something, you you get into a squad and, um, and just love being around, you know, that atmosphere of, of, of being around um, kids my age that wanted to play sport. And we all did it. And we turned up on a Saturday, Sunday, and basically tried and played anything that we could. Um, and, yeah, I was just that kid at school that that loved sport and um, and threw myself um, into everything. Yeah. But Manchester United, I mean, I think we all know that that happened and, and, and Australian squads for cricket, you know, uh, the Manchester United thing I want to talk about, what was that experience like uh, first? Yeah. And and that ultimate decision in the end, oh, look, I'm going to go with football. Give, give me some yeah, ideas. Yeah, so basically I was I was playing for Tasmania in a championship in New South Wales and um, they had a talent scout, scout there um, at an under-15 carnival. And the talent scout was talking to my coach and my mum and dad and they said to me, 
would you be interested, would Brad be interested in coming over and trying um, with our youth academy? Mm. Um, and my coach and approached my mum and dad and said, blah, blah, blah. And then they approached me and I said, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, we'll go up there yes. and, and do it. You know, what? it's Man United. It's, you know, it's just a small club, yeah, you know, nothing, nothing big. big. No big deal. Um, and we'll go over there and, and do it. So 90, 95, 96 season, um, I went over there. Uh, year 10, I was in year 10 at the time. Um, so basically spent January to March trialling with uh, the Youth Academy. So yeah. if you're thinking Youth Academy, you're thinking 16 to basically 18-year-olds. Yeah. Um, highly talented, basically full-time professional athletes. They go to school on Thursday. So this is their, their life and their program that they um, dealt. Yeah. Um, their life is they basically, which is, I think our, our footy boys should go th through this um, traineeship Basically, what they do when they get to a, a, the club early in the morning is they get there early at 8 a.m. Yeah. They have breakfast. So everyone, you don't eat at home. You have breakfast at the training. The seniors, the reserves come in. Um, they they go and have their breakfast. But then the, the youth players basically have to clean up the plates, the cutlery, go and wash everything down, go and clean the tables. Um, and then they go down downstairs and then the boots that the players have used, the, the reserves and the senior boys are going to go and polish their boots for their for their training oh. session. So you're going to, you know, Robbo, you know, you've you've kicked you've kicked eight on the weekend, Robbo. Yeah. I'm going to go down to number twenty four and going to go and polish, you know, Russell Robinson's boots. It might be David Beckham's boots that I pull out and I and I polish. Yeah. Um, and then they go out and train. So basically, your morning was breakfast, um, dishes, duty, polish the boots, and then you go out and train. And then at the end of the day, it was sort of, they go through their whole day, training day, as in training, weights, yeah. massage, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the day, it was the same um, same kind of set, set up. So basically what they had to do at the end of the day is in the Premier League soccer is the seniors have change rooms, the reserves have change rooms, um, youth academy have change rooms, and the youth players are trainees. So you go and wash, you, you hose down the rooms, oh. you clean it all up. It's a full-on traineeship apprenticeship that yeah. you have to go through, and that's all the superstars. They did all the they did all the grounding and doing it. Um, yeah. So it's just a grounding for them that, that they're not privileged and they've I, got to go through the process. I like that. I actually do like that because a lot of these guys that get drafted now just come straight in and play senior football. They don't have any idea what it is actually like to work for a living. Yes. You know? So you're probably uh, thinking about that now that you're in an administrative role. But did you have it? Any moments there where you're like, oh, David Beckham's boots, I might, uh, might just uh, take I, I, I The only time I ever thought the question was, so the first day I, I flew into Manchester and I got picked up, there was a sign there at 15 going, Brad Green, blah, 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 God. can you come with me? So Brad Green gets in a, a limo, basically, goes straight to the cliff, which is the old man new training ground. Yeah. The, oh, this is no, no, I'm not lying here. Basically, the first thing I did was walk into the training complex and Alex Ferguson pulls me up to his office. So, oh. Sir Alex. I went straight up. To, so, I went straight up to the office and Sir Alex is sitting there chatting to me. And it's not about we've got this player in to our club. Yeah. He wanted to know I was trialling. So, I, was, I hadn't made it. Yeah. And it was just a, a guy like a, as you would do a, you know, we're trying to look at a rookie or a draftee that yeah. comes as an AFL concept that at our club that we've done at Melbourne, we do it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the senior coach went out of their way to pull me into his office, wanted to know about Tasmania, Australia, wow. nothing about my sporting talent or, or soccer. I was just purely and simply talking about um, that. We had a 10, 15 minute chat and said goodbye. And I still remember it like it was tomorrow yeah. that Sir Alex pulled me up to his office. And then over that sort of two month period is um, the senior players are like billionaires yeah. and I reckon Beckham drove in 10 new cars <laughs> no lie it was Ferraris Maseratis Lamborghinis any, any Land Rovers any car you could think of and it was this was back in 95 imagine the cars yeah. that they were today you drove in everything so yeah it was a, it was a life experience that um, that you can never um, take away and um, something I'll always remember um, going over there and experiencing. Mate, that is so cool hearing that. I've, I, I mean, I spent so much time around you. I actually don't, didn't know that. You know, I knew yeah. this kind of acutely that sort of stuff was going on. But wow, you know, and, and how cool is it that Alex Ferguson, you talk about culture and you talk about success and how much success he had being, you yeah. become a knighted person. Of course, you, 
you've got to have something special. There you go. He goes and finds out a little bit about Tasmania. The great the art the art of great coaches. Clarko gets to know his his junior players. Um, he, he wants to know every every player on his on his squad and where they're from and their yeah. family and their children and um, mum and dad and what their background is and you know the art of being a great coach is the nuance of of empathy yeah. um, and getting to know their, their their talent and their players that they're dealing with yeah. and yeah. you know more and more is AFL and coaching is about that yeah. I mean, empathy would not have been a, uh, a a key word that any coach would have had in their kit bag back in the, the 50s, 60s and 70s, but it's certainly become something uh, yes. of a buzzword now. Um, well done on all of that, mate. But then you make the decision uh, just through you know life. It happens and then AFL football rears its head and the Melbourne Football Club drafts you. Uh, talk to me about draft day. How'd that go down for you? Yeah, so draft day, 99, end of 99. So... Um, Back in the day where um, I played one year of, of AFL footy um, and then I played Tassie Mariners. Yeah. You would have played with the great Chris Fagan who's I coaching did. Brisbane. I did. Um, I, unfortunately, I didn't get coached in Tassie by, by Fage, who was at Melbourne at the time. He was. So he was assistant coach there. Glenn Frame was my coach at Tassie Mariners. Um, I played um, that season playing Tassie Mariners. The AFL flew me over to Tasmania at Rod Laver, um, which was where the draft was. Um, so I thought I was going to get picked up. Obviously, if they fly me over, yeah, that yeah. you're pretty. Um, were you hoping that you get yeah. drafted? You'd, you'd it's want pretty uh, disappointed if they fly you all the way and you don't get drafted. <laughs> so they flew me over. They flew mum and dad over, um, and then yeah, I got picked up, pick nineteen, um, ninety nine draft, and went to Melbourne yeah. um, and. From that set, I've been a Mad Demon supporter ever since mm -hmm. and um, grown, grown up and um, living and um, I cannot thank the Melbourne Footy Club for the last, how long, 21 years that I've been associated with them and they're a big part of my life. Oh yeah, been absolutely huge for both of us. They've really given us something special and that's why we continue to do what we do for the Red and the Blue. Mate, um, there would have been no bigger game for you in your career. There's been great moments, but that Carlton game, let's let's talk about the raw emotion of that where you and Brucey, just lit it up in what was your your first or, or second real crack year at it, you know, um, yeah. kicking goals from the boundary, just hitting it straight through the middle, like. And, yeah, the, and, so it was a qualifying final, first year two thousand. Yep. Um, so I look back on that, and people will say, "What was your most memorable game?" I still believe, you know, it's I played, um, you know, thirteen years of footy. And, you know, game 20 was my most memorable. You know, yeah. you look at that, man. It was amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how you look back on that time and still say that. But it was. It was, um, you know, the, the situation that the footy club was in, trying to make a grand final, um, 30 points down in the third quarter. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we get over the line and we, we're straight to a prelim and then we make a grand final. So, yeah, yeah. yeah big occasion. Um, great to be a part of and... Um, yeah, and and help the side get over the line and helping them win. It's um, yeah, it's it's a great feeling and and something that I've never forgotten. So it's it's been great, mate. You sit back now at your house and your kids are giving you all sorts of hell, and you remember back to that moment where eighty thousand people are screaming for you if you just kicked a goal and we're coming back from so many points beyond. You yeah. think you think to yourself, I used to be a superstar once. I shouldn't have, <laughs> I shouldn't have to put up with this. <laughs> I think we all do. I reckon, Robbo, we're like any past player and we go, you have 25, 30 minutes out. What are you missing from there? Yeah, you know? Exactly. I think we all sit there and think that uh, we can still play. Yeah, I'll um, do better than that now. Every yeah. day of the week, every weekend, I think I can still get out <laughs> there and get a kick. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, it's uh, I'm, pri I'm privileged to have played at the Melbourne Footy Club. I'm very proud of the footy club and... Um, and even now, I'm more proud than being associated with being a board member. And uh, we're playing on grand final day on, on Saturday, so I can't wait. Oh, mate. Well, I want to talk to you about all of that because you've got the inside stuff. And we haven't had anyone on the show yet that knows what's going on the intern. Like, I'll bet you're talking a lot about the, uh, the board and what's happening. And you've always got to have one eye on what's going on in the future as well. Yes, we're right now, but what are yeah. we doing in the future? So we'll get your breakdown and what you can give away in a little bit. But uh, I want to talk to you about the obvious and you, you, you spoke about it off the top of the show or the top of your interview about Anna uh, and, and the, the absolute um, tragedy that happened in your life and your kid's life when, 
when Anna was um, unfortunately caught up in a just a mishap, and that's what it was. Your learnings through football and in life and mum and dad or whatever obviously put you in good stead for how you dealt with all of that because personally, mate, what I saw uh, when you went through that was nothing but nothing more. I mean, I was blown away. We're all blown away with how well you handled it, firstly. And we all sort of, we, we didn't handle it as well as you because we were so sad for you. And you were all like, come on, boys, she'll be all right. We'll be fine. Where, where did that come from, mate? Because it was just um, absolutely awe-inspiring. I think I've, I've told a lot of people, and unless you get deep down in the conversation, that I think football teaches you a lot of good things um, and good habits. And it might be good and it might be bad. And it might be bluff. But mm. I think football teaches you strength, resilience, Mm. Uh, when things when the chips are down you got to get up um you get beaten you might get a blood nose you might get a broken knee you might get a broken body mm. but no one's sitting there going poor bugger me or, or crying for me yeah. they make you get up and you go you just you brush it off and you got to get up the next day and you keep moving mm. and being being a melbourne player being a melbourne um yes. supporter we know we've got to be resilient yes, and, and it makes you tough mentally because we've got to deal with a lot of things mm, mm. and i'm not trying to make light of um, my situation yeah. what i'm trying to say is i reckon a lot of what i've grown up with in those 21 years that i've been a melbourne person and a melbourne player is i got to a stage where i've got great resilience i've got great resilience training and i still deal with different things every day mm. um yeah. but the great thing that keeps me going is i've got my two beautiful boys that i, I know anna would want me to make sure that they're safe, secure, and looked after. And they, they're they the thing that I keep waking up every day for and making sure that they're fine. Yeah, it was, look, mate, it was, I went through something that no one ever would want to go through. It was, mm-hmm. it was tragedy. It was, it was terrible. Um, but in the end of the day, that's life. Mm-hmm. Um, I lost my wife. We've been, we were married for 11 years. We we're together for 16 years. Mm. Um, and for circumstances, as a healthy woman, she died within 48 hours. And it's, yes, it's a tragedy. Mm. And yeah, I, I struggled for four or five months. And, um, but I've been pretty good for the last 12 months, 18 months, because one that you, you go, well, you've got to get on with life. There's a lot, I'm 40, and there's a big part of my life that I've got to live. If you spend a whole life regretting and being regretful over that you've, you've been dealt this hand, you've been dealt this situation, and you, you go on the poor bug me stage, is that at the end of the day, there's going to be people that are going to turn around and go, mate, you just got to wake up yourself yeah, and get on with yeah, it. Yeah. Um, so I, it's not a self-talk. You've got to, you've got to deal with it yourself. But I have a lot of people that I, I confide in. I've got a lot of mentors and I keep talking to. I'm lucky that I found a great partner in Katie, mm. um, who who's a big part of my life now, and she's here with my boys. Mm. So we've got a big family based around mum and dad, and even Anna's family now a big part of my life. So mm. I've got a lot of people that I'm thankful for, but mate, it's still we still go through struggles and yeah. we still go through ups and downs. Yeah, but I'm lucky. Um, I can still support my kids. I can put food on the table. Mm. It's, it's far worse than me. Um, and that's what I keep thinking, that there's a lot of people out in this in this world that are, are far worse than, than I am. Mm. Um, and I've just got to get on with it and deal with it. And the sun comes up tomorrow. So yeah. we deal with it what it is. Um, and I'm just grateful that I can be happy and my kids are happy. Mm. That's all I think about. Yeah. Now, there would be people watching this. Uh, blown away by that they they knew acutely of what happened to you and and for those that don't know uh and just a medical procedure that just went wrong and and you know you go from having the normal life what you call a normal life two young kids beautiful wife and then all of a sudden it's t- turned on its head uh you talked a little bit there about um support and you've been really lucky with that talk to me a bit about cameron bruce uh and and his a friendship through that period. And I know a lot of people will buy your side, but he did not leave your side uh, for yeah. a week. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, it was, I think we, we know when when the chips are down, your friendships are, are based. And, and I, the ones that have turned up that, you know, when you're going through hard times, um, when, you know, when I was, when Anna was in ICU, um, Brucey was there, he didn't leave my side. Um, I, I suppose what I think back when you're talking about a, a person like Brucey, who's obviously one of my great mates, 
Um, it was a week after the grand, um, week after the grand final, week after Anna's um, funeral. Mm. Um, my mum rang me, and I was the kids had gone to school, and I was I was uh, I was in bed at 10, 10 a.m. I took I got up, got the kids to bed, and I went back to bed. Mm. She's going, what are you doing in bed? I'm going, I just don't want to get out of bed. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just, what am I going to do? I'm just, um, got, I don't feel like I, I want to be a part of today and I'm just going to go and lay in bed. And <laughs> um, that's where my happiness was. Yeah. Um, so I laid there and she, and mum was, mum was in Tassie. My dad was in Tassie and she thought, shit, something's wrong. Um, I need to call someone. So my mum called Brucey. Um, and Brucey literally turned up in my bedroom and I'm sitting there laying in bed and had a coffee at 10 a.m. goes, get out of bed. And I said, no. I said, <laughs> no. he goes, get out of bed. And I said, give me an hour. And that's what, what happened. Yeah. He goes, give me an hour. I said, give me an hour. And and then from that um, sort of time, I go, I've got to get out of bed. And now he's going to keep coming back in and tell me to get out of bed. Yeah. And then we went out for lunch. And, and from that day, I haven't, Got into bed, haven't gone into the poor bugger me mode. It was more, he was always going to be there if I need someone to talk to yeah. or you get into, you know, that sort of the stage where you just sort of feel that, you know, that's, you know, you're just having your moment yeah. um, and you just want a bit of me time. And, he, you know, he wanted to be there and my mum wanted to be there. That, that Brucey, what I would say from a friendship base is that he didn't let me go into depression stage. Yeah, yeah. He didn't want me to get into that state where I'm not going to let, let you lay in bed for three weeks or four weeks and yeah, just yeah. You know, let, you, let your life wither away. So yeah. he made me get out of bed. And all I say to people now is I haven't got back into bed from that day. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've got on with life and I woke up to that, you know, my kids getting him. <laughs> up at 7 a.m. and I get up with them and we, we get on with life and it's a day that we we get up and we wake up to and, and yeah. that's the daily life that we do. And, um, you know, you can fall into that trap and I know people with mental illness and it's a big issue in society mm. and I'm not downplaying it, mm. but what I'm saying is I could have gone down that path. Yeah. I decided on that day that I was going to get into bed and I just wasn't going to get out of it. Yeah. But what I did have was a friend that came around and got me out of it yeah. and yeah. from that day I haven't got back into it. Well, there's an amazing lesson, ladies and gentlemen, there, of what a friend can actually do for somebody else. So where we're all feeling a little bit, uh, well, we're all wallowing in pity at the moment, aren't we? And there's a lot of people just rioting yeah. in the city saying, you know, this is this can't happen to me. You know, there's some messages there. I reckon you can learn a lot from that. Uh, Granny, we, we do want to talk about the positives because it is yeah. grand final week and we will unpack, we'll unpack more of what we just talked about uh, in, in future dates together and I'll do some more of this. But my word, mate, uh, our club, we couldn't quite get them all the way in 2000. We came close a few times, but they're right there now. The club has been set up just really well now. And, and I'm talking coaches. I'm talking facility. That's something that we have all as supporters and, and people at the club to set up right, to give our players the best opportunity. Yep. It's right there now, mate. How are you feeling about Saturday evening? Well, I... I suppose when you come onto the board and yeah. you go, well, you, you got your side in the grand final the first year, you go, oh, how good is being on the board? <laughs> how good am I? Um, no. <laughs> uh, look, man, I'm not going to support. I'm proud. Um, you know, we. I actually remember um, this no word of a lie that I caught up with Goody. It's probably my first couple of months that I got onto the board. Went and sat down with Goody one on one, and we literally had a coffee shop just around the corner from me. And he said to me. He said to me straight, and he goes, "Mate, we've got a we've got a side that can play in the grand final." And I looked at him. I said, "Mate, over the last," I looked at my and I said, "Mate," I was thinking to myself, "Over the last couple of years, I'm going a side that can play in the grand final." I literally thought, "Mate, what are you talking You're about?" Crazy. Yeah. Like that's in my own brain. I go, yeah, yeah. "I know," but what I said to him, I said, "Mate, I love the positivity and I love the language." Yeah. Yeah. So the language that you're talking to our players and the language and the positivity that we're, we're, we're speaking to them is that he believed, and he actually did, he believed that we've got the talent and we've got the side that can play in the grand final. Yeah. So that was in February. So, you know, what's transformed and, um, you know, what's been said about an Adam Muse and a Mark Williams and these players that were brought into our club. Yeah. Um, but good, he's got to take a lot of credit because, yeah. you know, our, our great friend Adam Uze, he, he's sitting on the kingpin at the moment. Everyone thinks Uze is the difference. It's true. Um, but Goody's got to take a lot of credit too. So, uh, you know, 
as we know, it's a whole club that's got to get out, got to get your side to a flag, especially this day and age. And um, yeah, yeah, I couldn't be more proud being a board member of our club and yeah, yeah. Um, disappointed that I can't be there on, oh. on on Saturday. Jeez, if you can't be there, then there's no hope for a lot of people out there. If you're on the board and you're toiling away, mate. Uh, you, like I said to you before, and yes, it's great, and I've spoken to the boys about how excited we are and, and it would be brilliant to win one because it's been a long time without... But you've got to have one eye on the future, right? And the, and the, the club's got to stand up in, um, you know, the new world, I guess. What are you doing on the board at the moment is a, one of the last questions for you. What are you doing actively at the moment to make sure we're still a viable option moving forward? Yeah, correct. I suppose the governance of any board, you're looking to the future and making sure that the, the financial security of, of any club is, is, is looking to the future. Um, I'm sure any um, supporter or member would have seen over the last few days that the sale of the Bentley Club yep. um, went through, um, which which sort of was on our financial books. But what it means is that the financial security of our football club is sustained for years to come. Mm. Um, mm. It's a great thing for, for Melbourne. Um, it's a great sale. Um, and, you know, going past previous boards, I think has a man back in the yep. CEO back in the, the mid 90s that, that uh, that sort of brought on the Bentley Club and those board members that were there at that time. Yeah. Um, we've got to thank those guys because yeah. basically now the the security of the Melbourne Football Club in the future is that we can't. You know, we're we're one of the big clubs now. We're we're financially stable. We're yeah. you know the, our our financial books looks really strong. Yeah. And our list looks lot strong. You know, yeah. our list from a um, a list profile and contract wise. Um, our our good players have signed up for the next three or four years. Awesome. So sustained success when you're looking at any profile of any list. Um, you know, our good players, Gorn, Petraka, Oliver, um, Jackson, uh, Pickett, all these boys that we need to, to keep our club going for the future um, and names I could keep going on. We've got a period of time over the next sort of three years mm. that we've got all those players contracted. So yeah, yeah we're in a, we're in a window where we should be hopefully um, up the top of the ladder and, and winning premierships. Yeah, Green, I think that's a great way to finish this interview. There's been so much in that, but I'm not done with you. I'm going to get you back because I think there's a lot to learn from you over the uh, the the stuff that you've been through, not just over the last couple of years, but this whole tapestry, this whole body of work that you put together since. Uh, childhood through to now i think it's uh there's some stuff there that we can really learn from you uh will you join me again some at some point mate anytime buddy anytime <laughs> for a great tasmanian yes the tasmanians now you you get back to those kids mate because i'm sure they're running right out there with, thank you buddy with the girl great to see you buddy go d's and i love that go top d's. love that top you're wearing too get it at the demon shop give them hell give them hell <laughs> see you brother <laughs>